Okay, so my name's Corey. And my name's Abby. And I'm Josie. And we had the stories a lot of Equiano and a journey through Texas. And we did most of our project on a lot of Equiano because we really struggled finding the ones in the journey through Texas. And for our project, we did a like a music video to the I'm on a boat by the Lonely Island. And in the song, we summarize the story by telling how he got on the boat and he was captured, what happened on the boat to him, and what happened after he got off the boat. So right now we're going to let you hear the song one time and just hear it. And then we're going to play it again and show you what it really says, like with the lyrics on the screen. So, just like, don't try to listen to rap music. Don't think of the words. Just like listen to it first. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wait, is the Wait, is how do you turn that I see your belly button. Oh, it won't it won't do that? It won't play the music without the screen on? No. Yeah, okay, we hang on, wait, we gotta turn the screen on in a minute. But you can just downsize <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, okay. 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 Is the screen on now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Running on a track. 
And the next word was tolerate, and tolerate means to put up with something even though it's not enjoyable for you. The next one was the universal theme. The theme overall was slavery. We compared it to present day Coney in Africa. Even though this book was almost 300 years ago, it's still relevant today. Our analysis of the story was shown by breaking down the story into three parts. Before he got on the boat, when he was on the boat, and after. When we did this, we found a lot more, we found a lot more stuff instead of just looking at it as a whole. And this story is actually an archive, and even though it isn't like a group of historical texts, it still explains a lot about the past and what we don't get to see every day. There are two audiences in this text. One is from the primary source, which is everyone who read the book firsthand. Since Alada is the one who wrote it, he's the primary source. The audience in the secondary source would be all of you guys. Since we read the original primary source and paraphrased it to you, you are now the secondary source. And the central theme or thought about this book is, again, slavery. And that is what all the stories about the hardships of the Africans during this time. For denotation, we chose loathsome. All throughout the story, you see nothing but hate and detestable feelings towards the slaves. The next one was diary. Really, this whole book is about his life, and he's the one that wrote it, so it's his journal or diary. <clears throat> For diversity, we thought about how there wasn't just one kind, type of culture, or race there. There are many different kinds of Africans from all over Africa. The logical order of this book was found because he starts from getting captured, staying on the boat, to getting sold. And he kept the order of events in the place that they happened. The purpose for this story was to show people on the outside what these slaves were really treated like and how it was to be held as a human captive. And this is a slave narrative, obviously, because it was written <coughs> by a slave about his life. And counterclaim... Um, when it said the white man got really happy, but we don't know why, because our lives are pretty crappy. It's like a comparison. Well, not a comparison, but it's a difference. It's like an opposite. They got really happy because they were back to land. But again, the slaves, they weren't because they were going to be sold. Um, so now we're going to play the music video that we've been working <coughs> on forever, I guess. <laughs>